Oh. So welcome to the Everyday Heroes podcast. I am Philip Brady and I'm delighted today to welcome what I would say is probably a friend. I'm hoping to call you a friend, Christina, cool. Christina McCormick from Empowered. And I'm just delighted to get to share and hear some of your story and also then kind of use that for anybody listening. So Christina, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Uh, likewise and maybe just a one-liner on the podcast is really just trying to capture and share stories of people that you and I could be beside in the queue in Sainsbury's or Tesco but they're actually really inspiring other people and I want to try and capture those shory, stories stories yeah stories <laughs> to uh, to uh, just equip people with knowing that actually it's possible for them too and I don't think we realize we can be the hero in our own story and I want to just capture some of those stories so that we can hold on to that a little bit more. So again, just welcome and thanks for taking the time, but maybe just give us a, a couple of lines about who you are and what's going on for you at the moment in your life. Yeah, so I am Christina. Um, currently, I'm a personal trainer. Um, basically, I before becoming a personal trainer, I worked in the corporate world, but I just knew that it wasn't really fulfilling me. So I did my qualification as a personal trainer and then last year started doing both of them alongside each other so started building my own business while still working in the corporate world and then this year I went full-time um as a personal trainer just basically trying to help women become the best version of themselves um just through strength fitness and mindset that's my goal Nice. And recently moved house. And recently moved house. I have a lot going on <laughs> at the minute. Um, but yeah, no better time. Yeah. And a lovely dog. Beautiful dog. She <laughs> is everything. Like she is my world. They're so pure. They're just the best. So pure. <laughs> so pure. So much love. I hope she knows and they all know how loved they are. Yeah, we can talk about that because I'm learning so much from Elvis our little beagle and I uh, had another insight today we can get into it if you want really just about how we close down to life where dogs and pets are just so open to life they just experience it as it is and we close down and say no it should be like that it should be like this and it's just such an insight seeing him bouncing around carrying a plastic bottle that he found on the street just so open to life <laughs> it's so sweet but so profound right so many lessons there already just in a 20 minute walk this morning but tell me about you and that adventure. So that sounds like a, a noticing of a lack of fulfillment mm -hmm. that kind of brought you to this call to what I would call an adventure for yourself. So maybe just what was that like and what kind of made you commit to that? So it's funny that you say that because it was actually a very, very long period of lack of fulfillment. Um, I've been strength training for like 10 years and it's always something I love to do. Um, and I fell into it because I was really struggling, um, myself with body image and my relationship with food was terrible. I was just so focused on becoming the smallest version of myself all the time um, and at that time I actually was struggling from an eating disorder so I really was obsessed with the gym and my brother-in-law actually introduced me to a personal trainer um, and I started working with her for a while and she was amazing so strong and I just started seeing things in a different light whenever I started working with her um, I really loved getting strong. So for me, it was like this focus that brought me away from what I was currently struggling with. And then I was able to see about like, I was having to fuel my body if I wanted to build that strength. Um, so I just kind of fell in love with it. And I always say like strength training saved my life several times, like several times um, with things that I have been struggling with. Um, but with this time specifically, it was obviously more prominent because that is how I get into it. Um, 
And then I, the second personal trainer I work with, I actually developed a very close bond with the first personal trainer. And then we started going to another personal trainer together. Um, and he said to me, so that I was, must have only been like 19 at the time. I was really young. He was like, you should do this as a job. And I was like, there's no way. Like, I couldn't do this. I was very, very into myself as an in introverted. I just, at that point, the gym and what I do now were very different. As in, it was all gym floor, personal trainers were having to go out and chat to people on the gym floor. And that wasn't just something that I wanted to do. Plus, for a long time, I really struggled with this concept of women being personal trainers. As in, yes, it's all well and good when I'm 19, but what happens when I'm 30? What happens when I'm 40? So I put it off for years. Um, and then I continued to work in the corporate world. So I built myself up really, really quickly. Um, I went from job to job and I climbed the ladder quite quick I was really good at what I did I'm quite like intellectual so I do put everything with I give my everything to what I do I like to do well um and I did do really well but it was always about what's next for me like I was never happy doing what I was doing it was like okay well what's the next promotion what is the next pay rise? What's next? And then I get this wee buzz when I get that promotion or pay rise. And then two or three weeks later, I'm like, right, okay, so what are we aiming for next? There was no sense of like happiness or fulfillment at the end of the day. And then I got to this point in my life, maybe like four years ago, and I was so unhappy. I was mentally struggling so so bad um and I just kept thinking what is the point like what is the point in life like is this all I'm supposed to do I'm here I work I come home I sleep I eat I do it again I do it again and I just couldn't suss it out and to me whenever I start thinking what is the point now I know that's always and I, if I hear anyone else saying that I know that it's always like a cause for concern because I'm like, there's something up here. Um, even then, when I got to that point, I still didn't change. I still didn't decide to change careers because I was doing what I was doing for a while and I built it up and I was financially in a good career. But even financially, I wasn't secure because I spent loads of money trying to make myself happy so I was like at this point like 10k in credit card debt because I just was spending I was so unhappy and then I changed jobs again so I was bouncing about I, I think I had like four different jobs over the time not that I was bouncing about I stayed in each for about two years but I was never content being where I was um, and I'd always spoke about personal training and I might do this and I might do that. And I think my parents were always very, very skeptical. So maybe, I don't think held me back. They were just trying to say, be smart about what you're doing. So I always was very smart about what I was doing and just never went for it. And then I, after this whole period where I was struggling, I, um, met my current partner who is a personal trainer and he just watching him have a different way of life where he was so happy and doing what he wanted to do and you know like just it started to build resentment in me that I was he was coming home and then he was saying, oh, I'm away out and I'm doing this. And he loved his job. And I was so happy for him, but also sad for myself, um, which was difficult as well. Uh, but then I, I floated the idea past him. He was like, you should do it. Like, why not? And then I said one day to my sister and my mom, I was like, I've actually looked into this. And it was the first time I'd went this far. I'd looked into it before, but there was nothing... 
it was all like um in the tech and it the part-time course even I didn't think it would work because it was like always like a two-week intensive course and I couldn't take that off work and just all of these reasons why I couldn't and then I, I had looked into doing it in ECA and it was a Tuesday evening and a Saturday all day and I was like that's fine I could do that and if nothing else I just learned something more about something that I love doing that I've done for so long so I spoke to my sister and my mom about it and I was like I might do this my sister she just got a bit frustrated with me she was like you've spoke about this for 10 years we either just do it or stop talking about it and I was like <laughs> okay I'm just gonna do it and I had a conversation with Lenny and Lenny can be quite harsh like he's just straight to the point so he I expected to join that call and him talk me into it and he didn't he was just like if you want to do it do it like I'm not here to to force you but it sounds to me like you've been unhappy for a really long time and unfulfilled so how long are you going to let that go on for and I was like just do it like what is the worst that can happen and I went into it with that mindset of if like very very worst case scenario here I just learned something more about something that I enjoy and that's it like will I ever regret investing in myself no so I did and that is is then when I came around to doing it and as soon as I started doing it I was like yep this is for me this is what I need to be doing. This is where I need to be. This is what I'm good at. This is how I can help people. And I think that was what was missing in my previous jobs. I didn't feel like I was making an impact on anyone. And I had tried different routes to make an impact in my job because I had done manager roles and I had tried that way to, you know, bring out the best in people. But I just wasn't fulfilled like so as soon as I started doing that and I think my own story inspired a lot of people and does inspire a lot of people because I'm very open and honest about struggles that I've had because I know that it helps other people so I do be open and honest about it and that makes I think what I do that little bit different from other people in the industry. I feel like that was the longest answer ever <laughs> to your question. <laughs> when I when I kind of share some things to people about how to coach other people, I give them four questions and more or less the right question you could probably spend an hour on. I, but, I could go back and talk on points there. <laughs> <laughs> but there's lots to unpick there. So yeah the lack of fulfillment and kind of noticing that for too long, it's, it's a, it's a place that you could easily get stuck mm. and not actually desire to move or, or, or change away from that. But then also when you say about try to, you, you were initially trying to be the smallest version of yourself, mm -hmm. any possibility to grow greater than that is going to feel so alien to how you were wiring yourself for so long as well. Right. And then you said about, Oh, um, PTs are or should be maybe loud, energetic, whatever. I don't fit that. So then I'm at what, like, what are my choices? What are my options? And I totally get the kind of no impact on people, but you are still trying different jobs, even managing others to try and have that same impact, but it probably wasn't tuned to the impact that you wanted. And one of the questions that I was going to ask you next is probably related to some of this, which is we can hesitate when like all of what I've just said builds up. And when people say to us either, no, that's not for you. Or yeah, like, like what are you waiting for? And so yeah. the hesitation can, can hold us back. But how did you pay attention to that hesitation in yourself? Like what was it that finally made the decision to say, like, let's go, move forward, let's proceed. I think I was in a very different place mentally and I had very different people surrounding me. Um, 
So even in my own relationships, I had struggled previously and they were never very healthy. Um, and I had never really been with someone who was pushing me to be better. Someone pushing me to be bigger and better and support me. It was always someone who people were content with me being small and wanted me to stay in that box. Mm. Um, and I fell into it. And I think I was just probably with how I had struggled. I wasn't prepared and I didn't see the value in myself um, to maybe step out of that. And I always just thought it was something that I couldn't do. Just looking at it and not, I couldn't do that. There's no way. And, you know, maybe not being with someone who says, well, why couldn't you? Or, yeah, you could. So I think I had maybe different people surrounding me. But I had done the work, more importantly, um, so that it didn't matter if I had different people surrounding me because I started to know what I was capable of. And I started to push myself and I started to want more for myself rather than this is what I'm supposed to do and you know I remember having a conversation with my mum and she said I was like I feel like there's more to life there has to be more to life like I don't want to get up and work nine to five and or nine to six or nine to seven and then go to the gym and come home and she my mom's quite old school she was like that's what everyone does kind of suck it up like that's real life Christina and I just can remember thinking I accepted that for so long that that was life and that was what I was supposed to do but I just reached this point where I was like but I don't want that to be my I don't want that to be my life and I just kind of made this decision that I knew that I wasn't happy and I think that was what was different I just decided that I wanted more for myself. And I had spent so long, so much of my life struggling mentally and not even really being aware of it. And then once I kind of got help and I started working with people and um, I worked with a therapist who I still work with today and like it just changed me so much to the point where I was able to see there is more and I can accomplish more. If that makes sense. There is more and I can accomplish more. Love it. Yeah. And so can I tell you just a really quick story about why I studied to be a PT just for yeah. the understanding. So I did the ECA course last year. And what I was noticing is, well, it's a couple of things and I'm trying to get ahead of the trend because of the collective disconnect that COVID caused. Mm -hmm. And you could say a level of um, an, an external event that will cause mental health struggles. Mm -hmm. And lots of people are, and I'm going to use this language deliberately, stuck. Yeah. What's the opposite to stuck? Moving. <laughs> right. And it's not always mental kind of moving with different questions and stuff. It's actually an embodied thing. Yeah. And if you actually move your body, I can show you the science. It is insane what it does mentally uh, to how we think and how we feel and how we are in the world. So I wanted to build that understanding. And I see, and I'll, I'll do this as an exercise at the ECA summit next week. We're recording this on the 15th of June. It'll go out roughly at the end of the month, but don't tell anybody it's only a, it's <laughs> only a Thursday, right? But what I'm going to do is get everyone to actually look around and actually understand the impact that movement can have on mental health and wellness and performance. And the room that will be there, you could say, are the fitness industry in Northern Ireland are the yeah. future of the fitness industry and we have a big job to do and it's time to do it and fears and insecurities are not good enough yeah there is more what is it there's more to do no there's more what was the way you said it say it one more time mm -hmm. there's more and i'm capable of more there's more to life 
and I'm yeah. capable of more. Yeah, I can accomplish more. I can accomplish more, more and I can accomplish more. Yeah. And that's true for everybody that's been stuck. Yeah. Right. Hence movement. Hence, I want to work with PTs and inspire them to dream a little bit bigger too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's class. <laughs> yeah. Hence <laughs> vitamin P as the reg plate on my car. <laughs> vitamin physiology. That's what um, it is. Th that's class. <laughs> it's a class way to look at it. But you're so right. Like, the movement I always say this whenever I'm chatting on social media or whatever like movement isn't therapy or like training isn't therapy but it really helps like if you improve your movement if you improve your nutrition if you improve your sleep you're already on to something good there mm. um and just while while we were saying that about like what kind of pushed me it was a combination of everything that I went through, but also what I went through training. Um, and I knew that I could do it differently or what I, what I seen as a better approach to training. Um, all around me, all I could see was women, especially walking into um, PTs or gyms and signing up and going in with a healthy mindset and leaving with some form of disordered eating or things like that where then they start to focus on being smaller and because I spent so many years in that mindset I was like no I need to teach people that there is more and there's a better way these low calorie diets these people who are forcing you to track your calories if previously you've suffered with some sort of form of disordered eating that's not okay and there's a difference. I think females especially um, do seem to struggle with it a bit more as in they, there is this like misconception that, you know, you should do loads of cardio and eat little and move often, but that's not the case and it doesn't need to be the case. But I've worked with so many females who, you know, have been to personal trainers previously and have to work to get them out of the mindset that they're in um and to me the industry just wasn't it just wasn't good enough it just wasn't good enough that I can go into a personal trainer and I can go in healthy and feeling good but I just want to build up strength and I actually leave with disordered eating behaviors after I end up doing a photo shoot that I maybe didn't even intend to do or if someone comes to me and their goal is I want to strip body fat for a photo shoot in six weeks. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not your girl. That's, that's not what I'm about. Yeah. That's but not who I am. I want to leave you better off than I find you not worse off. And yes, you can do that. That's great. Like if any of my girls who I'm training at the minute want to get leaner, I'm not against that at all. I just want them to understand why they want to do it but also do it in a healthier way mm. not in a six-week shred something that you can't maintain and then you end up struggling with your body image after because you've restricted your calories you're walking 20k steps a day that's not sustainable for anyone mm. and the standard of the industry in my opinion just isn't there there's just not enough. People can do whatever they want. I can go to a personal trainer and say, I want to lose weight. And he can give me a meal plan for 800 calories. And I can trust that person because they are an expert in their field or that's what I think they are. And I was like, no, I can't, I can't sit back and let, I went to a personal trainer and told that personal trainer that I had struggled with an eating disorder and that I didn't want to track calories because for me, I know that at that point that would put me on a downward spiral. And he was like, well, listen, that's the only way you can achieve your goals. So I let, I went into that conversation being sure that I didn't want to track calories. I left that conversation and I went and bought food skills. So I was like, this can't happen. And I need to do something about it. Hmm. So, so that was... Are. Twofold. So I am. So I am. And I was like a twofold answer. It's okay. 
but it makes sense. And again, it's that you see, you want to raise the standards of what's uh, the experience of people when it can be an opportunity to input or share things with people that aren't helpful or don't serve them in the long run, but will absolutely get them short-term results. And it's an infinite game. It's a long game. So we can't play short games anymore. So you're yeah. trying to pay attention to that long game. A hundred percent journey rather than photo shoot six weeks. Yeah. And you're like exactly what you said, how much movement can improve your mental health. If someone goes into a place like that, where their big focus is on getting smaller, you're going to compromise your mental health for what you think is physical health when that's probably not even healthy. At that point, health is no longer the goal. Yeah. And that's what is important, I think. Funny that. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no doubt then on this adventure, there's been challenges and stuff like that along the way and times when it's difficult. So how do you remind yourself to keep moving forward? So are there things that you do? Are there like things you remind yourself of? Or is there people that have kind of been along the way that have kind of nudged you and continued you forward? Or like, what's that look like that actually keeps you moving towards what it is that you're working towards? Yeah, I think when I started, um, so I have for like the past three years trained in like a semi-private facility um, and the coaches that I was working with previously, once I said, I'm considering doing this course, they were like the, the guy who was coaching me, the owner of the gym, he said, do it like hundred percent. And there's a place for you here as a coach. So that was a massive thing that spurred me on initially um I didn't end up working there but it was a that gym had a massive impact on where I am today um and then also so working in a semi-private facility I knew I wanted to do things in that format I wanted to do maybe small group training and I didn't want to be in a commercial gym I knew it wasn't for me I knew that I placed such a focus on mental health and that's what I talk about and I think like attracts like so a lot of the girls who come to me relate to what I'm saying about maybe body image or anxiety and they don't feel a lot of the girls don't feel comfortable in a commercial a big commercial gym um so I always knew that what I wanted was something a bit smaller um which for me meant having to put myself out there even more because if I'm in a commercial gym my marketing can be on the gym floor if I'm in a semi-private facility I don't have that luxury the only clients that I get are people who literally want to come to me not there because I'm there because they've came across me because I've approached them so that was a massive a massive thing for me because I knew that a lot of that was going to mean social media marketing. Um, so that was something that definitely held me back a bit um, in that I didn't want to do it. <laughs> so I had come off social media whenever I talk about that point where I was mentally struggling for a while. I came off it for around a year because I knew that it just wasn't serving me. For me, I was using social media for validation like I was using all of these other things in my life like the money other things for validation you know feeling low posting a picture getting a couple of likes feeling better about myself for a wee minute and then feeling low again so I removed myself from it and also that sense of comparison and the highlight reel and all of these things so social media was something that I had a bit of a rocky relationship with. So when I got it back, because I knew I was going to have to use it for marketing, I decided that how I was going to go about it was going to be very different. I was going to be very real about myself, about my struggles. I'm not going to show here's all the highs. My life is brilliant. It's not like everyone has ups and downs and that's normal. And 
that vulnerability was hard for me because I'm very used to pretending everything's great, pretending I'm great, there's nothing wrong. And I found it difficult to be like, here are the struggles that I've been through and maybe you've been through them too. Um, but I really struggled also with this concept of people thinking, who does she think she is? So I was very afraid to post and talk on my stories and to do all of these things because all I could think was, you know, people are going to see that and be like, oh, she's a wannabe influencer or who does she think she is? And um, now it doesn't even cross my mind. Now I couldn't care less. But at that time, that was a massive roadblock, I think, for me. But I started doing that before I did the course because I had the guidance of my partner who was saying, you know, start putting yourself out there, start posting and, and start doing these things. And then I was getting people coming on, viewing my stories who I knew didn't follow me, like boys from school that I knew would have been the, the cool group of boys who I knew I was in group chats. I knew they were probably making fun of me or I thought, I can't assume, but I thought that's what was going on. And I could have let it hold me back, but my partner, he was very like, who cares? Like, who cares if they have something to say? And I lost like a lot of followers on the way, but then more people started following me. And I remember speaking to Lenny about it when I was doing the course. And he was like, he, he made me see it in a completely different way. And anyone who is starting out in the fitness industry or, you know, is struggling with the concept of social media um, for their business, I always say this to them because it's so knowledgeable. Those people who unfollow you, who cares? They're not a prospective customer. And this is what you're doing this for. Like you want to reach the right people. You want to help the right people. So if you're not adding value to those people, who cares? Let them go. And I was like, it's so true. But I think for me, that was definitely the biggest roadblock. I was putting myself out there whenever I, I'm not a person who likes to be in the spotlight. I don't like to put myself out there. I don't like people know my business. I don't like people know my vulnerabilities. And I find that a massive struggle. But then I did have those people in my corner who were saying, hey, Karsh, do it. Um, and even the, like the first time I spoke on my stories, I specifically remember my hands shaking. Like whenever I was holding the camera in front of my face, I was like, I can't, I actually can't post this. I can't. And I just did. And now it's one of those things that you do that you don't even think about. Mm. You can care less about it. I'm like, whatever it is, what it is. Yeah. It's not the thing. It's the thinking about the thing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and the therapist that I worked with years ago, he had said to me, man is not disturbed by things. Man is deserved, disturbed by the view he takes of things. Yeah, and that 100%. always stuck with me. Always. Yeah. 100%. And what lessons have you taken then from this? Um, I think a big lesson for me is that firstly, people are always going to have something to say. No matter how much good you're trying to do, there is someone somewhere who will probably have something negative to say about you, but that's not your business. It's not your business what other people think about you. All you can focus on is yourself um, and what you're doing and be happy about what you're doing. Um, second, feel the fear and do it anyway. Third, you're never going to crow in your comfort zone. When I look back now to even how much I've developed since becoming a personal trainer and how much I've, I'm able to put myself out there, like when I'm coaching, when I'm posting, I am this confident version of myself. I am this, like my coach head goes on and I'm, I'm good to go. When I'm away from that, I'm 
nice, quiet, chilled me. And I, I, I got to be, I got to do both. Um, but I'm never going to grow if I just want to be comfortable all the time. There are certain things that I have to do that I maybe don't want to do at the time, but they are going to bring me to, you know, eventually where I need to be. And when you now kind of return home or go back to friend circles or reunions or whatever you want to call it, how do you think you show up differently now than, let's say, I don't know, 10 years ago? Um, I think I'm a completely different person than I was 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, like, worlds apart when I think about it. It instills me with pride, like how far I've come, how far I've grown as a person, how much better I'm able to manage everything. Um, but in terms of showing up differently, like to my home life, to like my friends, my family, I know that I'm so much wiser. I know probably, I feel like that's from reading. <laughs> like I read a lot and invest a lot in myself so I completely show up differently I have a completely different mindset than I had years ago um I'm definitely more comfortable with who I am as a person I'm more accepting of that and using all of my strengths to my advantage um I'm building on the weaknesses so I know that I definitely show up very differently when I think back to so, to me even five years ago I barely recognize myself my heart actually hurts for me 10 years ago mm. Ten shows years. the growth yeah and it shows the self-love if your heart is willing yeah. to get involved for mm. a previous version of who you are mm. I'm listening to a book at the moment. I'm re-listening to a book, The Untethered Soul. And it talks about how our heart is built to open and allow blood to go out to our bodies and squeeze it back in and open and close and this kind of thing. And what what that means is when we open to life and possibilities and who we could become versus how we normally just close into that kind of thing, how we feel about ourselves other people in the world around us changes dramatically. Yeah. So it sounds like you've opened and you're getting the benefits of it. Yeah. But even my view of like, you know, I actually got a, a trolling message the other day. Uh, it was insane. Um, but I got this, it was a really horrible message and how I viewed it, how it didn't really impact me. It impacted me to an extent, but all I could think about was how much I felt for that person. Mm. Was all I could think about was how much hurt people hurt people, how when I was hurt, I'm sure I did hurt a lot of people because I was really, really struggling. Mm. And it all I could think about as well was the growth of myself. Whenever I was, whenever I got that message that all I could think was, I feel so bad for this person that this is where they're at, that they need to try and put me down to make them feel better about themselves. This is what they think is their only option to feel good about themselves. Yeah. And it's crazy. The, Mm. the growth that you can, now, don't get me wrong. I don't always (laughs) respond how I would like to respond, but. That's why I think I, I still do the work and still have that support around me of, you know, wise people. And it'll never be done. The work is never done. Never. That's what I think is almost. I, I remember whenever we did our, um, you were doing your Close the Gap and I did a t- testimonial for you and we chatted about this. The work is never done. Like just when you think, like you've grown so much, you've so much further to go. 
we always have and, and whenever I look back I'm like it's insane the growth that I like how much of a different person I am like how much I've grew it's insane to me but also I know I have such a long way to go because hmm. it's never done you're constantly having to work on yourself to be a better version yeah and that's not to say to discount your progress no it's just that it, it, when I get to point a then I'll be happy or whatever it's like I know you can be today and you can work on becoming even happier or whatever it is in the future it's just a more open versus a waiting for yeah uh, happy whatever it is in the future 100%. so if somebody wanted to be a hero in their story what advice would you give them um do the work is the advice that i would give them um i think to be a hero in your own story you need to be brave you need to embrace growing i think growth is is the most important thing but also acknowledging how maybe you already are a hero in your own story like what are you doing at the minute that already makes you that hero I do a lot of this with my girls like I think we're always so focused on like what I'm not doing right or like how I can be better but what are you doing right now that maybe is making you a hero in your own story and how can you build on that and keep building on that and keep growing in that way um focus on the good the good gets better that's what i think yeah what you focus on grows yeah yeah 100 percent. and is there any questions i should have asked you um I think you should have asked me what would I have done differently? What would your answer be? <laughs> Nothing. Because I wanted to great answer. Great I wanted answer. to always I always get the question, or if I'm speaking to people, you know, why did you not do it sooner? Why did you not make this move? It took you 10 years to get there. Like, why would you not? And I'm so happy with how I did it because myself eight years ago wouldn't have been in a position to do what I'm doing now. I wouldn't have been prepared for it because I always think people say like, oh, what do you regret? Or do you regret not doing it sooner? I'm like, no, because everything's happening the way it's supposed to happen. All of the struggles that I have went through to get to this point have made me the person that I am who's able to take this knowledge forward and if I hadn't have went through everything on the way then I wouldn't be here I wouldn't be ready to run my own business I wouldn't be ready to push to be this version of myself that I'm trying to be hmm. good answer cool. thanks because it's easy to say oh I change all of these no 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 yeah. no no thank you no I think all of the struggles brought me to here and if I want if I had have done this years ago I wouldn't I wouldn't be in this position to be where I am now is I wouldn't have been able to do it I'll tell you a story that I'm going to tell next week on Friday right and it's about butterflies guess why I love butterflies I'm just kidding <laughs> just because it's nature but there's so two people stumble across a cocoon and a butterfly trying to break out of the cocoon and i'm not sure if you've heard the story before but one of the people goes and rushes over and says i'm going to break the butterfly out and break the cocoon and loosen it and the other person says no 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 wait if you do that no actually sorry it's the other way around they did go and released the butterfly and the butterfly was all like stuck to the ground and couldn't move and wasn't able to kind of open its wings and fly. And the person said, it's the struggle 
to get out of the cocoon that makes it strong enough to be able to become what it is. And so often we frame struggle or failure or difficulty or mistakes or the journey as, no, I need to push it away. I can't struggle. I was like, no, that is what is forging who you could become and who you are becoming. We have to embrace that struggle, that messy middle between caterpillar and butterfly, that messy middle, literally it's messy in, in a cocoon. It's all fluid. It's all rotten looking or whatever, but it's a thing of beauty because that's also where all the growth and change and updating and all of that good stuff in life is happening in that beautiful, messy middle. And I think we, we lose sight of that, the wisdom of that. It's crazy that you say that because now whenever I look back, I can remember it, all of these separate points wherever I was struggling along the way. And there's one time in particular, I can remember speaking to my mom and saying like, why is this happening to me? Or why am I going through this? And I look back now and I'm like, I'm so grateful for that. Like so, so grateful that that happened and sometimes when you're going through something difficult the worst thing you can hear is everything happens for a reason because you're like what could the reason of this possibly be yeah it is bullshit and yeah you're like stop lying like that's something that people say to try and make you feel better about your current situation um and now I, I do when I look back I'm like thank god even the worst most difficult times I look back and I'm like I'm so grateful for that difficulty because it brought with it so much growth. Like you grow through what you go through. Exactly right. And the quote to summarize that as well is a new day begins in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I think that like, it, sometimes things don't make sense when you're going through it and like I mentioned that this year has been particularly really difficult for me and even now I'm not like oh, I'm grateful this has happened or I'm grateful because of the growth that this has produced but I can I do still have the faith that I'll be able to look back and be like that's why that's happened and this is why this has got me here Before we finish, have you any questions for me? Um, if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? <laughs> How much younger? Say even like 10 years ago. on the spot now <laughs> yeah, it's because it's, it's a good question um it's probably I think it's a mix of maybe two things. Okay, we'll give you two. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> one, of, one, one of the things I think is... So, so what's coming to mind is my uncle, and I'm actually taking him out tonight. We're going to an event, like a seminar, a personal development seminar of a guy who, he's in Belfast. His name is Pat Divoli. He does this tour in Belfast, Dublin, Galway Cork and I'm like but I talk about all this stuff how come he has 10 billion followers right <laughs> but I'm like no 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 it's a kick in the arse to get moving and my uncle that's going he told me years ago you're too young to do that you're too young to do like coach leaders who do you like not who do you think you are but it's who, who do you think you are mm. and he was trying to protect me it's an act of love and yeah. let me keep you safe I probably shouldn't have listened to him and I didn't but I probably shouldn't have listened to him a little bit earlier. And so I think that part of that, that, so the first one is you are enough. 
and you'll become more enough along the way. But you're already starting from enough. You're enough just as you are. Yes. And you'll become more enough. That's one. And the second is trust building the plane as you're flying. It might never be ready to take off. That would be number two. And I actually wanted to be a motivational speaker. I'll talk about this on Friday as well. And now I actually want to be a like challenge speaker saying more or less motivation will come and go. You'll feel topped up and you'll be raring to go and then you'll fall asleep and you'll wake up groggy and you'll be like, oh, fuck that. Yeah. But now I want to be slightly like a challenge speaker or like a compassion speaker where the two kind of go hand in hand. The struggle is what will give you the moments of pride and confidence and growth and joy and all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. But don't forget to be compassionate with yourself and other people along the way too. Yeah. And I think that that's actually more motivational rather than let me top you up to feel ready to go for everything and get you feeling whatever it is. It doesn't matter what you feel. Sometimes you just have to do what you have to do, Mm -hmm. but it also does matter what you feel. So look after yourself and pay attention to it. Love that. I'll take those pieces of advice. (laughs) (laughs) So Christina McCormick, thank you for taking time. I appreciate you and your journey and the willingness that you have to share it and the vulnerability that you show and the permission that you give other people to be able to do the same and just for taking time out to be uh, yourself. And I'm looking forward to seeing your journey. And again, whenever we catch up again, hearing how much growth and potential has been um, released because of your your continued movement forward thank you so much for having me 